He took our sins upon himself on the tree in order that we might be reconciled to God. And so we gather today to remember and look with wonder at the amazing extent and the shape of God's love for us. This is holy ground as none other. So let us with humble and grateful hearts worship and bow down. The worship team from Manuel Community Church, Songs of Wings of Eagles, is going to come out and lead us as we begin our worship. Let's hear what the word of the Lord says this morning. Isaiah 53, 5. That he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. <laughs>
say, I would like to say something very quick. Uh, my beloved Jesus Christ, we are not here today in a funeral of the body of Jesus Christ. We are not here today to cry on the body of Jesus Christ in a coffin. But we are here today to sing, to celebrate our victory, grace of the dead and blood of Jesus Christ. That the reason the Evangelical Baptist Church wanted to see here and the band, the El Shama is here today. And the song we're gonna sing is a queer song, but we put this song on the screen for you, we translated it. I wrote this song a long time ago, but the Maestro Sarger Sensi, the pianist, arrangement, some arrangement of this song, is a very talented pianist. And probably next time we'll come with our CDs. <laughs> and, it's and it's a powerful song, and you will be blessed.
this is that, and we are going to right now. Um, please stand and we will greet you with your audience um, later. Father took Jesus and had him forget the soldiers. The soldiers lifted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They caught in him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him in the face. Pilate came out and said, Look, I am bringing him out to you. To it you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns, and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials, <coughs> officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, and they crucified him. Those who passed by hurled, insulted him, shaking their hands and saying, so, so you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. The people stood watching. The rulers even stared at him. They said, He saved the others. Let him save himself. If he is Christ of God, the chosen one. At the sixth. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in, the, in a loud voice. When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he is called Elijah. Immediate, immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that he bound his hand and gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from out of the water. Please be seated. One of the criminals who hung the earth and saints I want you to Christ, save yourself in us. But the other women rebuked me, don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man, I'm from my They said, Jesus, remember me. When you come into the kingdom, Jesus answered him, I think you need you. Today you will be with me in paradise. Word of the Lord. No, the Karen choir is going to come soon.
Dr. Paula Smith. Dr. Smith is the program director at Sandwich Learning and Counseling Center, an after school program on Peter Street. He served there since January 2003. He also um, was a high school teacher for 18 years with the Greater Essex County District School Board, and he's now the pastor at First Sandwich Baptist Church. I'll just share with you uh, how I was struck when I had the opportunity to ask him if he would speak today, and, and he said he would. And he said, I'm humble. And so that's the kind of man the Lord would speak to us through this morning. And we welcome you now, Dr. Smith, to come and speak.
our God. In the Old Testament, there was a wall that was called the Holy of Fools. I found the high priest for them. But on that day, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross of Calvary, they said that there was an earthquake, and there was an earthquake, and the earthquake ripped or rent that wall of separation. And as a result, we were brought closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I'm feeling stirred. Praise the Holy Name. Romans 5.10 tells us that for while we were sinners, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His love. He is our reconciliator. As a result of that, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Yes, it's a name that is above hunger. Yes, it is a name that is above all kind of debilitating diseases. Yes, it is a name that is above all names. Praise his holy name. Oh, praise God. I'd like you to know today that the great Christian writer, by the name of C.S. Lewis, once said that heaven is a place of reunion. Heaven is a place of reunion. He said that God created us for fellowship with Him. See, God wants us back. And so He sent His Son as our reconciliator. Praise His holy name. The scripture tells us in Philippians 3.20, it tells us that our citizenship is in heaven, from which we eagerly wait for the sake. No, this is not our home. We are mere sojourners here. We're just passing through here. This world is going to be somehow be cast away. Oh, well, I'm here to tell you that our oh Lord and say that Jesus Christ has brought us out of this world and we are here to, to serve him and we are here to meet with our God in heaven. <coughs> no, we are not here to stay a long time as some of them may feel that we are here to, to spend eternity. No, we are not here to spend eternity. We are here. We are passing through because Revelation 21, the apostle or the disciple John tells us that I, John, I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth because the whole earth and the whole heaven is past. Praise the Lord in name. Amen. So I'm here to let you know today that God's goal is to be with us again. He said that, that Jesus came to reconcile us back to him. 
As the scripture tells us in John 3, 16, it tells us that for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Yes, whosoever <coughs> believe in him should not perish. Praise his name. Have a last man. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ is our reconciliator. That he came to stand in the gap for us. But we never forget that. So we know he paid the price. As in Isaiah tells us, Isaiah 52, 14 tells us that he didn't even look human when they finished scrooging him. Praise his holy name. He didn't look human on that cross. Praise his name. And further on in that book, Isaiah 53, 5, it tells us that, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace is upon him. And by his pride, yes, we were healed. I'm feeling stirred. So and as the text that was read earlier, Luke 23, verses 39 to 43, tells us that he was placed between two thieves. I coined one as criminal number one and the second criminal number two, or the penitent criminal number two. Criminal number one. He mocked Christ. He said, Save yourself and save us. Save yourself, he said, and save us. We can just fast forward this to our society today <coughs> that we ask for things to prove that he is a sovereign God. And uh, just like the ten lepers that Jesus saved, uh, Jesus spent on the one return. And Jesus asked him, We are it now. That's what's happening in our society today. We go out, we ask God for things, and we don't return to give thanks. <coughs> I'm here to tell you today that Jesus looked at that at the second criminal who actually rebuked the first criminal. And he said, do you not even fear God? We indeed, in the book of them, justify for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man, could you all say this man? This man. This man. He said, this man has done nothing wrong. Then Jesus said to him, and he said to Jesus first, he said to Jesus, he said, Oh, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He was a penitent criminal. Number two. And thou and Jesus said to him, I surely I say to you today that you will be 
with me in paradise. Now my challenge to you today is that you should not wait until you are on your deathbed to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. You see, you might not be privileged to do that because you don't not know when you're going to go. You need to accept him today. You see, there are situations in this world. When we look up across the ocean, we see there are all kinds of disturbances in the Middle East. Yes, and among us we have hunger and we have all kinds of illnesses, all kinds of sexual immoral acts. We have all kinds of criminal elements. So you may not live to see that last day you may not be able to say to God, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. You are to give to him today. Your life today. You may not have another chance. This is your opportunity to give to him today. So my challenge to you today is to take control of your life. Take control of your life today. And do not expect to go on in this world of sin. I'd like you to know also today that God presented our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as our propitiator. As you're wondering what that means, propitiator is, is an appeasement of divine wrath by sacrificial offering. An appeasement. We have to appease God. That what Jesus, that's why he sent Jesus. He was an appeasement for our sin. We had no dealing with God because God is holy and we are, we were sinners. So he had to send his son, Jesus Christ, as an appeasement. of divine wrath. Praise his holy name. <coughs> so what can we say? We say that Christ's death brings pardon. It brings deliverance. Christ's death brings freedom. And when I speak of freedom, it reminds me of a young boy who was on a plane going to Jamaica. He was going with a, a church group to Jamaica. And while he was seated on the plane, of course, the, the waitress came around, sorry. And she had a full trolley. And the little young man, he looked. He looked in the food trolley and he saw you know, all kinds of sandwiches and all kinds of drinks and all kinds of cookies and, and so on. And so the, the waitress, she said to him, Young man, what would you like? And he looked at her and he said, 
No, thank you, ma'am. And so she wheeled her cart down the aisle. And in a few moments, the, the young man looked around and he saw his friends, his colleagues, eating and drinking. Some of the eleven seconds. And then the waitress came back to him. And the waitress asked him again, are you sure you don't need anything? And before he could answer, she said, it is free, you know, it is free. You don't have to pay for it. Today I'm telling you that your salvation is free. Just, you don't have to pay anything for it. You need to accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. Because salvation is free. What are you waiting for? What is it that you are hunger for? This is your chance. I'm challenging you today. Again, I say to take control of the privilege today. And don't wait for tomorrow to be with him in paradise. Take control of things. Because you know that he stands at the door and he knocks. No, he will not force his way in. It's going to be up to you. It's, if it's going to be, it's up to you today. Well, the question is, will you let me? Will you let me? I just like to close on this little hymn. The little hymn that goes like this, my hope is filled from nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh, praise the holy name of oh, this old solid rock I stand, all of the ground.
the language would be praising the Lord. We want to thank you all today for coming. Thank you uh, to all the musicians, to the pastors, to the members and friends of our Baptist churches, to Rick and Vicki and Dennis in the sound, to the, those that were helping with the children. And we thank most of all our Lord Jesus Christ. And now unto him who loves us and freed us from our sins with his life's blood, who made of us a royal house to serve as the priests of his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen.